you. And I, 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 don't if it, yeah. I don't know if it necessarily grows with you, but it certainly kind of it stays with you. And that's kind of perhaps the that's a better way, way to think about unique, it. Or, or the, the way it's pretty unique amongst games that kind of that people are so fundamentally loyal to it that kind of the whole OSRS kind of community is basically comprised of people who kind of played the original RS as children and kind of hated the kind of the way the original game developed and so kind of eventually came back to this kind of pure, more original kind of shit graphics form of it and kind of stayed with it ever since that I suspect that kind of is a tiny fraction of the community who are kind of under 20 at this point just because kind of it's a particular generation kind of a particular snapshot captured of particular people um, at a particular point in time who just kind of stuck with it and it's become kind of organically part of their lives. How's it going? Hope y'all are doing fantastic. Today we have with us a a very old man in the clan. His name is Jasper. He's been with us for like a thousand years. He's uh, from the UK. And he's one of the most insightful and delightful conversationalist as I've ever had in my life. He is absolutely a 10 out of 10 individual, an excellent gamer. He's very knowledgeable in all things related to RuneScape and a plethora of other subjects as well. And I'm excited for what you all have to hear today. <laughs> as with every episode, we do giveaways. Um, so make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment tagging your RSN. And if I like your comment, I'll give you a bond next week. We got merch. Feel free to pick some up if you want to support the channel. And of course, share it with all your friends and family. Anyways, the winner of last week's giveaway Impasta. Congrats, Impasta. <laughs> Join the clan. Wait, no, you're actually already in the clan. Congrats, you'll get your bond. <laughs> Enjoy the episode, boys. <clears throat> All right, starting in three, two, one. Boom, I'm in. Jasper, how are you doing? Can you hear me? Sounds like perhaps I can't hear you. I don't know. Is your microphone plugged in? It's doing a mic check. Okay. Cool, cool. All right, well, while we're doing that, I got myself a, uh, since you're drinking gin, I don't have any gin. I do have a Key Lime LaCroix and a Voodoo Ranger Imperial IPA, so... Those are the choices. I think it's any better, Jasper. Yes, you sound perfect. Mm, great, glad that's sorted. 
Um, you, you say fancy with the, your, your branded IPAs. And what was that whiskey the first one? Uh, you saying Lafroy? Uh, Lacroix. It's just a. Um, oh, oh, Lacroix. Yeah. Yeah. The, the water. Yes, yes. Yeah, I like to drink those. The key lime flavor is my favorite. That that's fair. I, I will only judge fruit ciders. Like flavored sparkling water doesn't mean anything, so that's fine. That's fair. <laughs> nice. Well, Jasper, it's great hearing your voice again, man. It's been a while. Oh, I, I, I've missed you too. It's kind of weird being away from a year and a half, for a year and a half, and then coming back and every, everything's still the same, everyone's still here, it feels like nothing's changed. Well, the, the clan has gone through a, um, a few changes, but nothing too significant, I think. There's an opportunity here for you to evangelize and talk how the, how the, the clan's got better, bigger, stronger in the year since I've left. <laughs> Yeah, since you've left, Jasper, uh, I, I can only say Rome has only grown. We are in the rising phase right now. Not yet bombarded by barbarians at the gate. So it's like the Republic fallen and this is like the birth of the, the Imperial era? Or kind of where, where are we at with the Empire metaphor? I would have to say we are still currently in the Republic era. Um, Actually, okay. no, I, I would say we're in the Empire phase. Uh, hard to say exactly which part of the Empire, if this is like towards the end or the middle. I want to say we're still in the good years. And you came okay, back just in time. That's fair. I'm, I'm glad to hear it. Is there a particular Emperor you feel kinship with, that you feel your kind of your leadership identifies with? Of course. Diocletian, I think he's a good guy. He brought back the pagan religions of the of the of the Romans of old and did his best to reform and keep the what what was left of the empire together um I like Diocletian I think he's not a bad guy I also like how he, he retired as well instead choosing an agrarian lifestyle and when asked to come back he said no if only you can observe these cabbages <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I respect that. It's also kind of cool that you've chosen kind of a right at the end of the Empire Emperor who's kind of just trying to kind of hold things together, like everything is fundamentally falling apart, I think, by that point. And yet Diocletian was kind of the dying breath of good order, perhaps. Yes. Yeah, I would say he's probably one of the last, um, one of the last, like, pagan emperors, you know, that, uh, I don't know, he's, he's not a bad guy, so. What about you? Do you have a favorite yeah, emperor? But um any of the kind of second century greats so kind of hadrian marcus aurelius um kind okay. of is uh, that's the kind of the from my perspective and trajan and so on that's the kind of the peak imperial period like empire at its maximum extent things have never been better the kind of right. the rome never had it so good era and everything was stable and happy and there was no kind of sense of barbarians on the horizon that you get in the third century yeah. Well, those were the, um, I think it was called the year of the five or six good emperors, right? So... Yeah, well, you, you do, well but it's kind of, I think, um, kind of combining it a little bit because there's the year of the four emperors, which I think was the first century in the civil wars after the death of Nero. And then there were the five good emperors in the second century right. AD, which are kind of the, the five good emperors in a row that kind of all the historians thought was kind of the peak Rome in a sense, peak stability, peak wealth, kind of everything was kind of good and happy in relative terms as it could be. Yes, and then the I think that all ended with Yes. Yeah, exactly. And then that all ended with Commodus, who's the kind of the crazy guy in Gladiator who kind of brought it all crashing down. Yeah, well, it's, um, you know, as great as Rome is, it was never without its bad emperors. And it's what makes it so interesting, I think. So you're more of a, uh, a Trajan, Hadrian, kind of all the guys in like what we go Trajan, Hadrian, uh, Antoninus Pius, right, and then Marcus Aurelius, yeah, I think. Mark, and then it would end with Marcus Aurelius, uh, Commodus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it, it, it all fell apart a, a bit at that point. But okay, but a hundred years of stability is more than I suspect most societies can kind of really hope for. A hundred years of having it good is more than most societies can hope for. Right. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a YouTube channel that I. 
I follow, and he hasn't really posted too much on this in a while, but um, I think his name is Dova Hadi, and he makes like these, or he, he got big out of making like a, a history of the Roman Empire videos, and it's kind of like these meme compilation style, um, very internet humor uh, videos that are, okay. that it goes through like a whole entire like rise and fall of Rome, pretty much, uh, all the way through to I believe the, um, what is it? Um, like when they move into like Turkey and stuff like that. I forgot what the, uh, the Ottoman, the, Ottoman the, the Byzantine Empire. Byzantine, yeah, that one. So, but he, he's got some great videos on it. So I think you'd appreciate it. And I believe Dova Hadi is, he might be from Europe. He sounds European. I, I, I love the, the kind of the, the European kinship you expect to be kind of like assumed here. Yeah, no, no like suddenly the link sounds good. And kind of on the European kinship thing, it's kind of weird to hear you kind of saying words in an American accent, but kind of just hearing that slightly weird alien intonation is cool. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Like uh, here in America, we always kind of joke that uh, people in Britain or British, yeah, y'all speak with kind of a, uh, a speech impediment it sounds kind of weird but you know I won't, well, uh, without, I say, without the saying T's hey actually uh, one second Jasper could you um, could you plug your microphone in a little bit more I, I'm hearing like a little bit of static disconnect when you talk and I think it's coming okay. from your okay, let me just check let me see what I can do in my end Okay, is that any better? Uh, no, not really. Um, let me. Like, get, can you say something again? I'm wondering if it's just my headphones or if it's coming out of yours. If it's coming out of my headphones, then that's okay. Okay, I've okay. tried to reset it all. I kind of check the inputs and so on, so it looks okay on my end. Yeah, no, you sound fine now. Whatever you did worked. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Glad that sorted it. Yeah, so Jasper will... Uh, I don't know if you've listened to any of the previous episodes, uh, whether like Young Aka or Slash Bull, um, any of those guys. I was gonna, I was gonna say, I caught like five, ten minutes of one that was being recorded live, live maybe with Bog a, a week or two ago. So I caught a little bit of it and perhaps have a bit of sense of it, but I, I hope you've got a kind of a structure for the next half hour or so because I, I haven't come with any notes or anything or anything to monologue on. Oh, you're completely fine. Yeah, there's no notes needed. Um, I kind of just kind of freeform it and go based on whatever the conversation is and sort of how it's flowing. Okay. But we usually start off with sure. just, if Jasper, you can just introduce yourself a little bit. You don't have to say your name but uh, introduce yourself, just let us know a little bit about who you are, what you do, and where you're from. And we'll talk about RuneScape. Yeah, sure, happy to do that. So um, I'm happy to say that I'm called Tom, I'm 25. I'm, as kind of anyone who listens to this can probably guess, I live in Britain or kind of come from Britain. I live in London, um, I'm a consultant, and in terms of kind of RuneScape being kind of loosely involved for maybe 15-ish years by this point, so kind of way back in the original RuneScape and now kind of, as everyone is, kind of here for a long, long time, not a good time, and kind of on and off ever since. Nice, okay. Yeah, you've been here with us. Since, say, is that enough of an beginning. introduction? What what are, what are the points do you need? <laughs> no, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's, uh, that's good. So you're from London, you work as a consultant, and you've been with us since... I would say the dawn of the Workless Clan. Like you were around since probably the very early parts of 2020, I think. Um, I, it was, I was around a while ago, so I can I know there were kind of like gold stars in existence when I joined. So people like Webb, I, I have no idea how how active Webb is at the minute, but I'm aware that he's kind of a way more OG gold star than than I was. But yeah, I've been kind of a lot of workless for. Uh, Two and a half ish years, probably. So, yeah, but if it was founded beginning of 2020, probably not far after that. Yeah. yeah, there is some history here. And I've always appreciated uh, conversing with you 
online and I know you took like a probably over what like a year hiatus and you recently came back but when you were on more frequently um a little bit over a year ago I I I've all I've always appreciated our conversations how we don't agree on some things but we can always talk about it um yeah, it, it, exactly that that's fine and I, I genuinely kind of miss kind of our conversations like conversations in the chat for the last year and a half and as I say kind of it's weird that he it, RS is just one of those things you never really quit and then you eventually end up kind of back there no matter how long the gap is and as I say it's, in a sense it's like coming home so I'm glad I did log back in at the end of last month or the beginning of last month yeah what what brought you back to RuneScape Actually, before we get to that, what, why, why such a long hiatus? You know, we. Uh, I remember this one day you you kind of stopped logging in, and everyone was asking, "Where's Jasper? Where's Jasper?" And the only person that could say anything was Young Aka. He would say, "Jasper's living his best life. He is, uh, <laughs> you know." <he's laughs> yeah, um, we, we just okay, assumed, no, like, it, you're with it, your partner, just having a good time, and just. Uh, enjoying real life you know we were very supportive of that so when you logged back in that was a pleasant surprise I, yeah it kind of way to guilt trip me kind of everyone asking where i was uh, to be fair i think it was kind of a, a slight tail off over a couple of months that i was kind of um logging in less and less frequently but yeah kind of when i logged in um like january the first january the second this year then it did tell me it was like 490 odd days that I've been offline, which was kind of a surprise um, in, the, in terms of kind of why I left. I probably just kind of found, um, well, I moved to house in London, kind of job at the moment got pretty intense. So I just kind of fell out of the habit as kind of we do and then kind of fell back into the habit beginning of January. I don't think there's anything necessarily specific about it because kind of you fit RS into and out of your real life and kind of it's a part of it and kind of um occasionally you get disillusioned with it for a while and then just come back and that's the that's the trend i suspect pretty much everyone in their kind of mid-20s to early 30s that seems to be kind of the primary osrs demographic kind of is found yeah i like how you mention you fit osrs into and out of your life just um whenever you're able to it sounds like when you're playing RuneScape, things are a little bit more stable. Um, whether it's living con uh, situation or job, and then when you're not really on, uh, such as like the last uh, what 490 something days uh, before January, uh, it sounds like you were going through a transition in your life, um, such as like moving and um, just making sure you're doing well at your new job, right? Yeah, maybe a little bit, and it's kind of weird that th things kind of fold into and out of your life, but I, I don't necessarily think it's a huge thing, and to be honest, most of the time uh, at the moment when I'm kind of online, I'm literally just kind of AFK, in this case, fishing at the moment, um, and kind of working at my desk most of the time, and I will literally be kind of on work calls and kind of interviewing people and, and talking to people on work calls and kind of quietly entering my inventory of fish in the background, so... Hopefully that multitasking kind of I, I get away with and kind of no one notices my slight distraction when I have to do my inventory, but hey, <laughs> see how that goes. That's funny. Are you actually before, um, could you could you reset your microphone again? The noise came back on my end, um, but whatever you did yeah, yeah, uh, sure. the first time fixed it. Just give me a sec. Okay, so that's that should be reset again it if that's good. Yeah. fixed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds well, like it's, it's weird. I've, are you? It's using... weird. I've been on work calls. Really? Yeah, I, I'm trying to figure out yeah. if it's coming from my end. I don't think it's coming from my end. Um, I wonder if there's oh. like, do you have like a physical microphone, or are you just talking through Bluetooth? So I, I'm talking through Bluetooth on AirPods, but as I say, I've been I've been on work calls all day so hopefully the kind of there shouldn't be much of an issue um, but as I say I'm happy to keep resetting it if that's helpful from your end okay yeah I mean if you it, it, if you if you have to that's okay um, yeah I, I'm not sure what that noise is coming from uh, it's my first time hearing it so but I just heard that well, I, don't, I just heard I don't... that little clink <laughs> sounds like the gin 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that was the gin. That's just standard ambient noise in, in, in this house. That's fine. Um, but I don't think there's any other ambient noise. I mean, it's like half past midnight here, so everything's kind of quite chill and quiet. You'll only ever hear like an ambulance coming past. That's at, right. At some point, it's the night. It is like 12 a.m. for you right now. Thank you so much for um, staying up and coming on the podcast, uh, Jasper. It means a lot. I I've wanted to record with you for such a long time, and then uh, 490 days goes by. I finally can, so. Well, hopefully that absence has made the heart grow fonder and so on. Um, <laughs> how many episodes? Of, how many episodes of the, the podcast are you on now? What what episode number is this? So, this one's probably going to be like episode seventy five uh, or something like that. Yeah. I usually record a couple ahead of time and we re- release them every week. But for the last uh, hmm. few weeks, I've only been releasing like every two weeks. It's been kind of busy, but that's what we usually do. And does the podcast have like a central animating theme of any kind, or how the way kind of is you, it just? Yeah, how the way you play RuneScape affects your in real life. But we have any... like in previous ep- I was going to say in previous episodes, if you had kind of people make interesting links and things, because I, I genuinely don't know that I could. I would just be like, well, really? RS is kind of an a, kind of an addition to life. It doesn't kind of necessarily intersect <laughs> with the way I kind of live my life or think about life. Have you had kind of people giving deep emotional stories and kind of building up metaphors about it? Absolutely. Absolutely. You got to listen to InstaZoom's episode's a good one. Um, both the Young Akka's yeah. episodes are good. Pretty much every episode we highlight um, on RuneScape. Uh, now, whether RuneScape is a central conversation uh, kind of varies with the guests. But um, I'll tell you what, let me let me let me take a couple sips of my IPA. And uh, and I'll get on the same wavelength as you, and we'll start talking about RuneScape. So that's why I'm happy to talk about RS. I'm happy to talk about Rise and Fall of the Roman Empire. Happy to talk about philosophy, poetry, wherever you want to go. Ah, yes, Jasper, I love you. You are such a wonderful man, British man to talk to. One of the, I think, one of the most well-read and learned men in the men in the clan. It was such a shame that for the last 490 days you were gone, you know? It was uh, the Dark Ages, is how I describe it. The days of it's no just Jasper kind of, lead. It, or Jasper Gold. I was going to say, it's just, been, <laughs> it's just been incel central and kind of alt-right shitposting, has it? Oh, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like I've kind of calmed down a little bit. Um, but, okay. you know, I mean, like, it's, it is the internet, and I do let people talk whatever they want to talk about as long as it's not like any fed posting or anything like i don't know like pedophilia shit or something you know but uh yeah yeah i I mean i'm I'm pretty libertarian i'm pretty libertarian i i I respect and that's probably kind of the the synthesis of all that is worthless your your quote just then that like it is the internet which is true and kind of everyone shows their kind of edge lordy shit posting side on the internet kind of quite freely so Right. In a sense, it's kind of a more honest picture of kind of what people kind of think and say and kind of how they kind of approach and negotiate with life. Yeah. Yeah. Let's continue on that topic. I like that. What do you think it is about the internet that encourages people, whether like ironically or non-ironically, to um, express themselves in ways that they wouldn't otherwise express themselves in real life? Well, I, I mean, obviously, kind of on the top level, it will tend to pe- make people braver that the kind of whole anonymized process or semi-anonymized process means that people are willing to kind of say things they otherwise wouldn't or they feel kind of cons- constrained by society and their normal social interactions from saying. Um, but also the kind of, I think there's a general pressure to, if you want attention within kind of public forum of the internet, you have to kind of shift towards the edge in terms of the opinions you're shouting the jokes you're making being kind of edgier and loud than anyone else's so those kind of twin impulses i think combine towards creating perhaps a more kind of what kind of left-wing people might consider a toxic discourse um then kind of we might typically experience in kind of day-to-day human lives yeah i think that's a good analysis of it you're absolutely right you know when you are anonymous you tend to do things that you wouldn't otherwise do right or say if uh, if your identity was known for sure um and i think there's something with uh if other people are kind of posting insane shit you tend to want to say something too right uh it's i don't know what that is 
Uh, there's probably some psychological reason there. <laughs> Yeah, the, I, 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 yeah, I'm sure Jordan Peterson has got loads to say on the topic, but yeah, that kind of that, that escalate, escalation bias, I'm sure, kind of is a thing and a trend that as soon as someone says something, you kind of feel to or feel pressurized to respond on their terms. Yeah. Has there ever been a time for, like, do, do you feel that that same way when you're online, whether you're talking on RuneScape or um, talking with people on Discord? Uh, do you feel like the the takes or conversations you have, uh, whether it's things you say or um, just topics you dive into personally, uh, do you relate to that? Like you tend to just maybe be a little bit more, um, I don't know if extreme is the right word, you know, but you know, just you, you talk about things you wouldn't otherwise talk about. Like, do you relate to that? or you say things you wouldn't otherwise say? Um, I, I'm, I'm sure I feel kind of... Oh, uh, one second, Jasper. So could, you, could you reset your microphone again? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully that's reset now. And Sounds good. That's all working again. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I probably do kind of subconsciously feel socially pressured into kind of expressing myself in ways in the Discord or in the, the clan chat and kind of on the internet more generally in ways that I wouldn't kind of in person in real life but it's not something I'm necessarily more aware of uh, necessarily particularly aware of and I kind of tend to take a slightly kind of devil's advocate position in those debates and arguments anyway and kind of and to be honest kind of a generally quite hands-off approach that I will kind of just like let people shit post and watch them kind of go round in circles and they're not hurting anyone kind of just dropping their insane opinions or comments on the internet and so I don't feel the need to kind of necessarily engage massively in that debate it's kind of like everyone says about Twitter that kind of it's just a circle jerk of people who pick with opinions going kind of fundamentally nowhere and it's kind of that I, I don't necessarily feel the need to kind of get massively or directly involved in that sure yeah yeah there's uh there's fun in being a spectator and maybe stirring the pot a little bit uh, without overly investing yourself into a, uh, a conversation i think it's part of the uh the yeah, fun exactly. of being online with a bunch of other people i think yeah, no, I've seen kind of people come and go, people who've joined kind of work with the clan, work with the chat and kind of um, try to kind of change opinions. And I'm just kind of so fundamentally aware from kind of like the internet in real life that you will very rarely, ch ch you very rarely change anyone's kind of deeply or kind of personally held opinion. There's no kind of good or polite way of convincing someone who you kind of really disagree with in most cases. And so it's kind of... Uh, kind of an antagonistic road kind of going pretty much nowhere yeah that's a good way to phrase it that a changing of opinions specifically through an internet medium is i can see that being a less likely a less likely um thing to happen on the internet versus online it seems like the internet is more likely to reaffirm whatever biases and opinions you already have um whether or not you express them so express it specifically in that way or not the internet um especially if you browse into uh some darker parts of the internet like i do or something it uh it, it's more of a reaffirming effect than it is a uh, changing opinions yeah, I mean, they, they talk about kind of the algorithms that govern, I mean, like even YouTube, even not dark parts of the internet, that kind of start off with one kind of centre-right video and kind of drift further in that direction and vice versa, and that fundamentally those algorithms are designed to keep your attention, to kind of keep you entertained and kind of drive you towards videos that will kind of drive ad sales and so on. There's kind of great conspiracy theory, around the kind of the modern massive media machine and kind of the evil kind of Netflix, Facebook, Google overlords, um, and so on. But yeah, I think there is a kind of a general trend towards kind of extremity and that no one wants to be kind of a boring moderate because it's just kind of less exciting and everyone could be their most exciting self on the internet and express their kind of wildest, edgiest opinions, kind of kind of explore those. And as I say, you, you don't cut through all the kind of the crap and bluster and white noise without kind of edginess in that sense. 
Right, you have to, you have to stand out. Um, have your opinion actually be read or be heard, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, moderation in politics, in kind of whatever field or discipline, moderation is not sexy. Moderation doesn't kind of drive clicks or views. Moderation doesn't excite people more generally, and so kind of inevitably, there's that kind of outward pressure towards the fringes. Yeah. Wow, Jasper, that's you. You phrase things so eloquently. I'm totally on board with what you're saying. Yeah, I agree. That's funny. Oh, good. I'm, I'm glad that's helpful. Now we've kind of analysed kind of the, the state of modern discourse. What, what do you want to move on to next? <laughs> no, or uh, um, I don't know. We we could go into RuneScape. Uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, usually towards the end, we kind of tie everything together. But as far as RuneScape goes... Oh, I'm, and... I'm looking forward to your kind of your synthesis of everything we've discussed. Oh, well, see, I don't know. I've never uh, I've never done a podcast with uh, a Voodoo Ranger IPA before. It's basically like drinking two beers for me. So yeah, usually one beer is enough. Okay, but, <laughs> I was going to say, going hard tonight, and it's only like six o'clock your time, so you've started drinking early. <laughs> well, it's uh, I wanted to catch up with you before you go to bed, you know? So I wanted to make sure you get a, a good night's sleep, so... I'm going uh, in on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're so you're kind of so interested in kind of the pastoral care and kind of well-being of your clanmates. Your clanmates. <laughs> <laughs> yes, nobody should be drinking alone. It's my philosophy. Um, yeah, let's go into RuneScape now. Uh, yeah. How long have you been playing RuneScape for? Or what? When did you first um, get into so it? How about that? Uh, so I said earlier, probably kind of 15-ish years, which is fairly accurate, because I probably kind of started around when I was 10. Um, and again, that was just kind of loosely, very casually, like people at school kind of um, were kind of talking about it. And that's how it begins, as I think it did with pretty much everyone. And I didn't kind of play particularly kind of seriously, but kind of drifted out of it over the years. Um, yeah, that's kind of the, the general pattern and kind of playing for kind of six months a year and then kind of drifting off for a year or a couple of years. Uh, so it's been on and off for the last 15 years and as I suspect pretty much everyone in OSRS kind of nowadays kind of feels and did left with kind of EOC and um, RS3 in kind of 20, was that like 2011-ish, 2012-ish? And I just kind of didn't think about anything to do with our, or was that 2015? So anyway, one of, the, one of those years and I didn't think about anything to do with um, RS for kind of multiple years after that and then just kind of came back in the pandemic and okay. ended up in the kind of and ended up in the loving embrace of workless CC and kind of all its inhabitants <laughs> yeah yeah you loved it so much you left and came back you know or I guess you never left but you, you took a hiatus and you're still here Gold you, you, you never leave there. you just kind of you just you just retire temporarily no one's ever truly gone there they're all coming back at some point <laughs> That, that is true. I mean, um, shortly before you logged back in, Instazone, probably like maybe three or four months before you did, recently came back um, after mm. like, a, probably not not quite a year, but close, right? And um, I think he was involved with like a different clan, but then he, he just rejoined Workless and, you know, here he is, you know, he's streaming. Um, and, and did you kind of interrogate him for, for cheating on workplace? Did you kind of, did he have to do a, a re-entry interview? Did he have to kind of abandon all like prior allegiances to his kind of the clan he was being unfaithful to you with? <laughs> yes, he had to disavow his... No, no, he didn't have to do anything. It was just, you know, when, when people come back, it's just fun to, you know, catch up with them. Um, he wasn't a gold star anymore. Um, but then like after a while, you know, just kind of uh, give him back a star. But yeah, I mean, I... I don't think people um, taking long hiatuses or anything means they're like not part of the clan. It's just, you know, like we, we all have lives and at some points in our life, just other things take priority as is natural, I think. And really, it should be like that, right? You, you, you can't be just playing RuneScape all the time um, and doing nothing else, right? So uh, when people come back, it's always a good thing, I think. Um, and if they don't, that's okay too. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, it's kind of weird that RS exists as kind of one of those games that kind of fits in around while you're kind of doing other things or waiting for other things rather than kind of primarily something you do in genuine kind of free or leisure time. I mean, certainly that's it from my perspective, but kind of the hours I spend online are primarily kind of AFK, AFK while I do other things and so on. I appreciate that's not the same for everyone. Some people are kind of completely no lifing RS and kind of the, the, the kind of RS is their job. But again, that's the kind of the energy I approach it with. It's never been a kind of Absolutely, I have a free Saturday afternoon. I'm doing nothing else. I must kind of spend six hours online, um, kind of energy thing for me. Right. Yeah. Well, there's two. There's really two types of philosophies on RuneScape, right? There's the there's a side of like RuneScape is a fantastic game because it can fit into any part of your life, whether it is. Uh, like whether you're in school, uh, whether you're at work, whether you have a kid, you know, at, at, like RuneScape is a game that uh, really it, it grows with you, right? Um, there are times where you can play it more and times where you can play it less, but nonetheless, if you choose to play RuneScape, you can always somehow play RuneScape, right? You can you can skill, you can do something more AFK, you can do something more intensive, such as like a raid. Um, it doesn't have to be your life, um, but it can be. If you want to be really sweaty about it, you, you could. You know, if you want to be like an autistic, like uh, get 200 mil experience in a certain skill, you could do that too, um, and really grind for that, like Link's Titan, right? But um, you don't have to. And I, 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 don't if the, it, uh, I don't know if it necessarily grows with you, but it certainly kind of it stays with you, and that's kind of perhaps the that's a better way, way to think about it. Can, or, or the, the way it's pretty unique amongst games that kind of the people are so fundamentally loyal to it that kind of the whole. SRS kind of community is basically comprised of people who kind of played the original RS as children and kind of hated the kind of the way the original game developed and so kind of eventually came back to this kind of purer, more original kind of shit graphics form of it and kind of stayed with it ever since. That I suspect that kind of is a tiny fraction of the community who are kind of under 20 at this point just because kind of it's a particular generation, kind of a particular snapshot captured of particular people. Um, at a particular point in time, who just kind of stuck with it, and it's become kind of organically part of their lives. Yeah, yeah, it is a it is a game that is both nostalgic as it is innovative um, in terms of how you play it, right? Like the same way you play RuneScape now is not the same way you played RuneScape when you first discovered it 15 years ago, I imagine. Right? When you were 10 years old, you weren't dealing, uh, maybe not as efficiently what you're doing now, or you're probably not playing this, uh, the game as you did back then, right? Um, yeah, it, it's weird and that that's true, and I'm kind of certainly not kind of for when I was 10, I was certainly not kind of working out the metas and kind of most AFK or most efficient way of playing particular skills to 99 or whatever. I think there is kind of deep within we say that kind of that reactionary impulse, the whole kind of animus behind the OSRS is the idea that we are kind of this is kind of an old game that kind of none of the fundamental kind of things have changed, the way combat works, the way kind of skilling works, the way it all fits together is still kind of pretty much as it was in like 2008, 2007 when I think a lot of us started. Um, and that kind of everyone is primarily here because they hated the way the kind of the original game evolved, that there is a genuine desire to kind of revert to some kind of colder, purer sense of the game. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how it, whether that's your kind of thought on it or your experience. Are you kind of in a similar position that kind of you've been here for like 15 years or so? Yeah, I mean, I've been playing RuneScape, or I've I've been associated with RuneScape since I first made my account, you know? Uh, it's never truly left my life um, at any point. Uh, there were years where I didn't really play, um, but I would still log in to do, like, a holiday event. That was, like, my thing, you know? <laughs> I'd always log in to do the holiday events. Um, yeah, I, I remember those, and it's kind of a weird shifting in the meta in the sense that I don't even do those now because I'm, like, kind of, what's in it is just kind of a momentary entertainment that gives your kind of account nothing permanent and that's kind of probably slightly soulless of me that I'm kind of so now kind of efficiency focused like kind of goals focused even within the game that I'm like I don't want to spend time kind of playing through this pointless holiday event despite the fact that it's kind of 
the whole point of it is just to kind of be half an hour's entertainment kind of over the, the holiday season and in a sense that's the kind of a better part of the game perhaps than kind of soulless endless grinds yeah so so are you saying that when you were younger you were more interested in doing those holiday events whereas now you're not as interested I, I, I don't know in that sense, it, it's difficult to tell, but I, I know that kind of when I was younger, when I was kind of 12, 13, whatever, that I would kind of always do the holiday events, that I would kind of see them coming online and then think, oh, I must do that, whereas kind of now I don't necessarily feel that impulse in quite the same way. That's fair. Do you think a lot of that... Yeah, I do. Just to say, do, do you play them through now? Do you kind of religiously do all of them? I do, I do. The only uh, the only holiday event that I didn't do is the uh, is the gay pride event. Not because I was, you know, like I don't know. I just I just didn't really feel like doing it, right? But I I, w- I would always do the holiday events I grew up with, such as he such as Easter, uh, Christmas, and Halloween. Or I guess Easter, Halloween, and Christmas. So these are those are the ones I would consistently do, and I would read all the text and like I I, I just love it. Um, for me, it is a it it is like it is something that's going on in a uh online caricature of myself that i can engage in with uh, a bunch of other people that are doing the same thing you know um very similar to maybe the type of uh, amusement one would get uh standing at the grand exchange or um i guess in some ways you know like like standing at my house you know like uh there's a lot of people that yeah. just come into the house and just stand there and just talk. Um, and it, it's just it's just a way to be with other people online, I guess. Yeah, that, that, that's true. And I kind of I agree. There's kind of a richness to that, that kind of that storytelling. And I kind of like when I do quests now, I feel really guilty when I kind of just like spam the spacebar to kind of click through the dialogue because I've got kind of the quest guide up and I just want to kind of blitz through this quest to kind of add those points or whatever. And it's I appreciate that's kind of a little bit soulless, and yet kind of that's the kind of the probably bad habit I've fallen into, just kind of kind of getting things done rather than kind of trying to get involved in the storytelling or the lore or kind of the more kind of as I say the kind of the holistic richness of it all, and actually kind of involving yourself in um, kind of storytelling, the kind of the everything that's built up over the last, well, in this case, ten years. Yeah. What is it about? just the you describe it as soulless um when you skip uh the dialogue and um you really go more into just grinding uh for for exp you know what 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 is it you think that makes makes somebody do that right like you, you you would typically think if you're playing a video game um, something such as a uh, an RPG, right? You would want to know what the storyline is, right? Under any other circumstances of playing a game, um, especially a role-playing game, uh, you would want to know what's going on in the game. You wouldn't just skip things, right? What is it about yeah. RuneScape that... I don't know if it's promoted, but what you share is a common uh, action, right? Like the skipping of dialogue, the... Uh, perhaps the soulless grind why does that appeal to a generation of, of gamers who grew up playing runescape one way doing holiday events such as yourself and now um just <laughs> playing the game in a, in a way that, that that is not how they played it back then i don't know i think it's kind of a difficult question to answer and to admit that i have a good answer for it but it's I think it's just a slightly separate impulse that kind of, in a sense, the kind of the grind, the commitment, the kind of, not necessarily the, the difficulty, but the, as I say, kind of the commitment to it, kind of the literally spending hundreds of hours to just achieve pixels on a screen has its own perhaps satisfaction or kind of a different kind of satisfaction that you might, than you might find in other games that kind of complete it, kind of mean something despite Solus Prime kind of deeper and richer in a way because kind of everyone who kind of sees that is also in the game with you kind of understands that kind of commitment in a certain mm. sense understands what that's what it means that it's kind of 
it, it's something that it's difficult to devalue. And I think that's kind of one of the key impulses, perhaps, just because, I mean, you, you know the OSRS community as well as I do, but kind of when things are polled, when things are voted on, anything that kind of speeds up the skilling meta, anything that kind of is kind of amazing GPNL or kind of anything that kind of seems to devalue certain aspects of the game tends to immediately be voted down just because kind of we are kind of quite a, an old-fashioned reactionary community and anything we've already <laughs> achieved on our accounts we don't want to be kind of achieved more <laughs> easily by future generations it is kind of weird it's probably yeah. kind of got good metaphors for the society about kind of um about kind of Gen Zers and baby boomers kind of thinking, oh, well, I'm, I'm not going to die, I'm not going to leave my house. The kind of, um, we had it horribly in, in our day, so you guys, you younger generation, should have it any easier. Perhaps that's kind of a wider human impulse and it's maybe something to reflect on. Yeah. Yeah, no, there is a. It's kind of a weird concept, right? Like, why would you want to do something? uh that is inherently grindy i'm not saying it's difficult i'm just saying it's grindy right and you have the opportunity yeah. to vote upon a hey it's really grindy you know you're always complaining about it how about i make it easier and it's just no no i don't want yeah, exactly it's kind of it it, it it fetishizes complaining it fetishizes that kind of that time commitment and then obviously kind of you you don't want to kind of make the path you've trod more easily more uh, kind of easier for anyone kind of to follow you but it's kind of you're not necessarily pulling up the ladder but you're not making the you would never vote to make the ladder easier to climb because you think that uh, you're not necessarily suffering you've endured but kind of the time commitment you've kind of committed um, to kind of building a particular account or whatever should then be kind of respected on its own merits and that kind of future generations should not kind of see that in a kind of a weaker light because metas have changed and got easier since. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's sort of a camaraderie to the to sharing in a mutual um grind would be one word, suffering I think would be a better word. It's a more universal term, perhaps. Uh, there is something about the the grindiness, the uh, just the repetitiveness of RuneScape that I don't know what it is that it it, it <laughs> and this is why I enjoy talking to people about it. But there, there's something about that type of nature that you're right. It it is very inherently human. Um, to yeah. experience it that, is. but I don't know if it's human to want to uh, like continue that growing. You know, like I, I would think that if given the option to make something easier, typically you would want to make it easier, right? But as as shown in RuneScape, that is not like uh, at least a game like old school RuneScape. That is not that is not the um, you know that that's just not it, right? Um, but you, you want you want to make it easier for yourself only if you haven't kind of already achieved that particular thing that kind of if you are kind of a partner at a law firm or if you're kind of a, a consultant surgeon or whatever it happens to be that you appreciate the kind of time and the effort you've got into kind of achieving that that real life goal as it were sure if you were kind of starting over again you might kind of like be kind of um, intimidated by the thought of spending those kind of 10 years of exhausting 80 hour weeks kind of committed to that goal and re-achieving it but the fact that you've already committed to and got there will tend to kind of lock you into the position that anyone to follow after you I think kind of should go through a similar amount of kind of suffering and pain and dedication and kind of like to have a, a similarly kind of small chance of success in, in whatever discipline it happens to be. Do you think that quality of grind, whether it's appreciation of the grind, want to go through the grind, or wanting others to experience the same grind is a helpful quality for people to have? It's difficult to say, and I think it kind of changes circumstance by circumstance. I think kind of it may net terms be bad for society because kind of <laughs> society so, society tends to improve when things as a whole are made easier but kind of 
you are no longer kind of killing mammoths and kind of living in caves because kind of it is now kind of people's job to build houses kind of that are insulated and infinitely more kind of efficient and than they used to be and kind of more quickly than they used to be and kind of we can grow food from an industrial scale which means that more brain power and more kind of human time can be dedicated towards kind of other pursuits and so on but it's kind of become in net terms infinitely more efficient and I think as a trend that tends to be helpful that kind of grinds that become pointless shouldn't be fetishized just because of the sake of the grinds that there may be a kind of an old-fashioned abstract notion of kind of the grind and the pain and the suffering being good for someone but you learn something in the kind of the mm. thousands of hours of um, you, you dedicate towards a goal so I think in terms of kind of empirical evidence you extract from that it might it's kind of um, that, that evidence set I suspect is probably quite weak in the in general <laughs> terms things becoming easier is good for society yeah that's funny and yet here you are doing the thing yes. that you're saying is not exactly the best for society you know you're you're going against the grain wanting to play old school yeah. RuneScape yeah exactly I, I kind of I'm here chatting to you I'm here kind of fishing digital pixels I'm not kind of going off and changing the world so I mean in a sense fundamentally all of these kind of entertainment pursuits might be a net drain on society and yet it's just a question of kind of how we value and apportion value two different things in society how we kind of measure their worth and think oh that's good for society I mean it's very easy for kind of engineering graduates to say kind of anything that's not a, a directly practical role in the economy that's kind of building bridges that's kind of improving kind of the, the commute times from kind of San Francisco to Los Angeles or whatever it is is kind of uh, it is a worthless job or a worthless role but kind of there are, there are hopefully kind of richer kind of jobs out there that we think of society as a kind of a much more kind of nuanced and wider picture than just kind of efficiency scape as a lot of people tend to regard our assets yeah you know i wonder if... I mean, in a sense so sort of say in a sense that's kind of intuitive because i'm kind of probably make way more efficiency scape energy than you are and yet I've just kind of kind of decried it in real life um, and yet you're the guy who plays through all the holiday events and I'm the guy who's kind of sitting here spending kind of eight hours a day kind of fishing on the on a second screen while I kind of do work calls <laughs> I I think the I think the reason why people I'm not gonna say play RuneScape but interact with the medium that is RuneScape is uh there, there's different reasons for it right um, some people play it uh, as Bogskin would say because number go big you know he, uh, he, he gets a, a very large dopamine hit from it uh, so much that he continues to play while he's you know well, well, whatever he's doing you know he, he really enjoys that um, others it's a sense of community um, I don't know for me it's like I, I, I just enjoy I, I, it's the more community aspect for me I enjoy talking to people in the clan uh hearing perspectives from people otherwise I wouldn't have talked to you from around the world such as yourself um, but on the topic I want to go back to what you're saying about uh, this the grind that is RuneScape in some ways being negative for society uh, you know it, it makes me think like you know in any other circumstances you would think like the the saying like 10,000 hours makes you a master in something, right? Uh, like, does 10,000 hours into RuneScape grinding on whatever it is, you know, like 10,000 hours grinding to get like 200 mil in a skill, uh, multiply that by the number of skills such as Link's Titan did. Is that a positive effect? You know, like in some ways is, is mastery, uh, like mastery is good but not specifically good in everything you know um yeah it, it, i mean i, I that it's interesting you kind of reference the ten thousand hours thing which i think has kind of obviously become a kind of a part of pop culture and yet i think kind of genuine kind of researchers into that kind of thing have disavowed it immediately that kind of ten thousand hours is a goal is kind of meaningless and abstract and there's kind of very little kind of scientific evidence underpinning it Kind of certainly, I, I would say that kind of someone who's got 200 XP and a few skills or whatever, 
and spend thousands and thousands of hours of their life kind of pursuing those goals is not kind of better at the game than someone who's just got a kind of PK account with kind of a few million XP and kind of has fun in the wilderness. It's all a little bit kind of abstract in those terms that those 10,000 hours don't actively make you better. I mean, I'm not kind of, I'm not personally particularly mechanically good at the game. I'm not kind of an amazing PvP or anything. Um, and so kind of there are paid people who spend infinitely less time online on the game who are kind of way more kind of mechanically talented at, 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 than I am. So that whole kind of fetishization of time commitment, I think to a certain extent is kind of a road going nowhere because there is an ingrained kind of degree of talent um, that kind of can't just be made up with raw efforts. I mean, you look at it in things like sports that, I mean, I, I follow tennis in particular and it's weird watching kind of guys like Roger Federer kind of play, but I mean, he's retired now, but a few years ago, just watching him at uh, kind of 38 with kind of skinny arms and a bit of a dad bod kind of just somehow demolished guys who are kind of <laughs> in their mid twenties, kind of peak of their physical fitness. And I'm like, kind of, how does this work on a human level? But kind of, that there is just no way that this makes sense in my head. And yet that kind of raw, ingrained natural talent was kind of just enough to effortlessly overcome it. And obviously kind of people people do come better through practice and improvement that we should never kind of cry or kind of shit on the idea that kind of by working hard at something you do become much better at it. But I think we should also never kind of naively fetishize the value of just kind of spending huge amounts of your own time pursuing something that will kind of never kind of get you to a certain level within it. And so it's kind of about analysing that critically and finding that balance. Yeah. No, it's interesting that you bring up the example of Roger Federer in tennis, uh, specifically the example of sports. I don't pay attention to tennis. I do know who Roger Federer is. And, you know, it's, I, I don't know. I've, I, would I describe him as having a dad bod uh, in the early days? I'm not really sure. I never really watched him play back then. But I will say, I think when it comes to sports, it's never... It's not always the most athletic person is uh, is the best one at it, right? Uh, or, or it's not always the most like athletic looking body, uh, like aesthetic body is the best one at the sport. Um, a lot of it's just kind of knowing the skill of that sport, um, which in some ways, maybe it's some skill, uh, perhaps at the professional level, it is a combination both of skills and thousands of hours um, perfecting that skill, right? Uh, there's probably some raw talent in there as well. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of that at the professional level. Um, but the the grind is still there. But in that, in the sense of sports, there is a maybe there's like a more positive outcome to it. Uh, if you get really good, you can become a professional or something, right? Uh, as maybe some positive effect on your physical health. Um, would you say that uh, in the case of Roger Federer? is he is he a person that falls into the 10,000 hours um or would he be somebody who was a matter of just like genetic like talent that makes him so good at that sport i mean i think for people who kind of reach the top of any sport it will kind of tend to have to be a combination of the two that you are kind of within the kind of upper kind of tiny fraction of percentage point in terms of raw natural talent and that just kind of gives you the starting point to then kind of grind your skill to kind of a serious professional level and kind of Roger Federer is in, in a sense is an extreme example of that is kind of probably kind of one of the most talented tennis players ever to have kind of been born into the world and kind of having a, a starting point that kind of is massively further ahead than even the vast majority of other tennis players that mm. kind of he was able to kind of pick up skills that other tennis players would literally kind of just like stop their own kind of practices to kind of go past that kind of kind of level of skill and innate talent that kind of you get with kind of the very best sports players and so on. And obviously that's combined in most cases with kind of a lot of grind but again in lots of sports, lots of professional sports there'll be cases of kind of aggravation and frustration caused by people who are unbelievably naturally talented and because of that talent they tend to think they have to kind of practice less that they will turn up to fewer practices that they put in fewer hours and still be kind of 
further behind or still be kind of remain behind or still remain ahead of um, people who are less naturally talented but who are kind of grinding every day and that's kind of the case in tennis that the naturally talented people rise to the top and the people who kind of exhaust themselves in kind of cardio training for kind of 10 hours a day in kind of sweaty climates kind of six days a, six days a week for most of the year and yet still can't reach those levels and it's kind of a sad story in that sense but kind of that's to a certain extent yeah, well, the way bad and nice yeah it's um would you say that the the grind that roger federer does in perfecting his uh really his craft right his his skill um at playing tennis is the same type of grind that somebody like a Lynx Titan would have to go for 200 mil experience in all like the RuneScape skills. You know, like are those net like are those negative qualities, uh, or or would you say they're like different types of grind? I mean. <laughs> I think fundamentally there's a difference between kind of skill and effort. Um, it's possible to kind of draw broad rings around, but obviously those things overlap. So, I mean, kind of Lynx Titans kind of obviously immense, incomprehensible <laughs> to kind of most human beings. The amount of effort there is in itself is in and of itself a kind of skill. But the fact that that degree of kind of dedication, that single-minded focus, um, has kind of found an outlet and kind of has marched someone up to the top of the high schools in a particular game that no one kind of beyond our rest particularly cares about but the kind of the amount of kind of public attention the amount of people care about it to a certain extent is immaterial but for example some sports are bigger than others that kind of just because tennis is a kind of a massive commercial entity and the kind of top players get tens or hundreds of millions of dollars a year in kind of terms of prize money and endorsements doesn't necessarily mean that kind of tennis players are better athletes than kind of right. really win gold medals in bobsleigh or kind of archery at the Olympics, and yet you never see that kind of kind of public attention or uh, recognition or kind of financial reward. And it's all kind of on a spectrum there. That kind of some skills have just been deemed by society to be more kind of economically beneficial, more economically lucrative, more kind of interesting to kind of watch and mm -hmm. be consumed. Yeah, that's a good point. I was about to go on that. It, I guess it sounds like it comes down to the value of whatever skill um, you have uh, and or are perfecting, right? The the skill of being good at tennis, being a pro, is a lot more to the masses, I would say. Uh, a lot more entertaining, right, than some person, um, for whatever reason, like doing the same thing for thousands and thousands and thousands of hours uh simply just to do it right yeah that that's true but i i don't think necessarily we should kind of devalue that effort or kind of it's like kind of when i mean i i don't know how it is at high schools in america but like secondary schools in the uk so the equivalent there would be a tendency to have kind of attainment prizes for people who did well and then effort prizes for people who put the effort in. And I was always a little bit hesitant around kind of the idea that you were kind of judging people most kind of two different metrics because kind of people who got the attainment prizes were kind of just naturally more gifted and kind of I happened to personally be on that end of the spectrum that I could kind of do well without putting in a huge amount of effort and I would feel a bit, little bit guilty that I was kind of in a sense getting a better prize than the people who just put the, the effort <laughs> prize in and were still kind of attaining lower and I think that's kind of a symptom of just the way society set up in a way it will kind of tend to be in a kind of a fairly free society way but it's not necessarily a good way of apportioning value to people that kind of competitive right. dog eat dog world is not necessarily kind of healthy in all ways and in all terms yeah, no, I agree with you. Do you perhaps think that something like, or let, let's bring it back to you. So, so, to, so even with the perspective that something like a, a pursuing a grind in some ways can be a net negative on society, why 
do you still choose to do that grind? You know, as a matter of fact, you have two accounts, right? You have Jasper Lead and Jasper Gold. And uh, and I believe Jasper Lead is your Iron Man. Is that correct? Or is that just like an alternate account? Yeah, so, it's, yeah, so Jasper Le Lead was kind of a temporary alternate. It's not, it's not an Iron Man. It's kind of a thing I started up kind of a couple of months before I kind of quit or kind of temporarily paused. Let's say kind of temporarily retired um, for the first time. So that that's not particularly a significant account. Um, it, uh, it's difficult because uh, if, if we were all, if kind of, if everyone in society was animated by the desire to kind of do good, to kind of in kind of Jeremy Bentham or J.S. Mills kind of idea to kind of generate the maximum positive outcome for society as a whole, for the maximum number of people, or however they want to define it. Are you going for like utilitarianism, like uh, I guess yeah. perspective on yeah. it? Okay. Utilitarian. Exactly, utilitarian principles that if we were all kind of animated by that desire, then 99% of society would be doing completely different things. That we're not all kind of donating every kind of spare percent or pence of our income to kind of help starving children in Africa, that we're not all going off in our kind of holiday time to build orphanages or anything. We are not kind of um, doing necessarily anywhere near as much as we kind of could as individuals to kind of support society or kind of the human race as a whole and that everything as soon as you arrive at that kind of the acceptance of that exists on a spectrum that I wouldn't necessarily be saying that kind of quietly playing RS on a, on a second screen is necessarily a, a net drain on society just because if I wasn't doing that I don't know that I would personally be kind of adding a huge amount of gain to society otherwise sure. so it's kind well, of it's all relative well in your case you're you're doing it alongside doing something else, right? Like you're, you play RuneScape um, while you're, while you're doing something that isn't too mentally intensive at work, right? And I guess you're, you're doing it now too, since you're off work. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. And th th there are bits of kind of RS I'll play kind of quietly and kind of free time otherwise, but that, that free time, I wouldn't necessarily kind of be spending more productively like volunteering for a charity or anything. And so the idea of it kind of being a drain on society is it's not necessarily true, just in the sense that okay. it's not any more a drain on society than something else. And it kind of it, it's weird by sound kind of something defensive about that, but I think it's also important to <laughs> to think critically about it in the sense that what do we kind of as humans do on a day to day basis that is genuinely helpful? Why is kind of socializing better than playing a PC game? Why is kind of um, playing a sport better than kind of eating McDonald's? It's all kind of relative and um, it's difficult to ex assess exactly how valuable in net terms anything we might spend our time doing is. And we've all just got to kind of deal with the life we've got and live it as kind of best we can and so on. Hmm. So why do you play RuneScape then? Like Honestly, it... or the force of ha force of habit. I mean, I think it's kind of force of habit for most people. And sure, kind of. I think we we get enjoyment about it, and kind of you can joke that kind of we're here for a long time, not a good time. The whole idea that kind of it's just this we fall into the the kind of clutches. Of <laughs> You're here for a long time, it's... not a good time. You said. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. The, 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 this kind <laughs> of funny. this idea that we never really escape, but kind of. Um, I'm here for a long time, it, buddy. It, good time. <laughs> exactly, and I, I think that could literally be kind of the, the motto, of particular kind of the vast majority of OSRS. That's really that funny. It is, it, it, it is true that for the most part we're just thinking, well, kind of the, the next level. For, as you kind of quoted Bog earlier, saying kind of the number go bigger, the number does go bigger. And kind of that number going bigger doesn't necessarily really give us a particular hit of dopamine. It doesn't necessarily really make us much happier in the moment. And yet, it's kind of we fall into this rhythm of kind of thinking the next one kind of will, or kind of we just get into the habit of it and kind of yeah, calculating but... these new metas and so on. And it, it's a it's a healthier habit to fall into than obsessive gambling or anything. I suspect. Sure, sure. Yeah, and that's a perspective that a lot of people have given. Um, that you know. In some ways, like playing RuneScape kind of keeps people out of trouble, kind of keeps them doing like less hard drugs, um, stuff like that. Um, you said something I wanted to touch up upon that. Uh, 
you're talking about RuneScape. You play RuneScape out of a matter of habit, but you stop playing RuneScape for like over 490 days, almost 500 days. You know, um, you didn't play. Yeah, my, my days in the wilderness. Clearly, you, you guys were missing me. Yes, welcome back, my uh, my prodigal child. What? You know, it, it. So if you're talking about you play RuneScape out of a matter of habit, you you stop playing RuneScape for for days, uh, over a year. You know, almost two years, really. Um, what, like a year and a half, right? If it's a matter of habit that you weren't playing RuneScape, why would you come back to RuneScape? You're like, uh, like, like values and stuff set aside. Why did you come back? It's difficult for me to tell that kind of there was a flip, the, the new year kind of like, oh, okay, there's, I, I got some time off over the holidays and I just kind of, it, came into my head and I just kind of fell back into it again a little bit. Was and there something it, that was there something that you saw or um, something you heard that made you want to come back? Not that I can think of specifically. I mean, it, it, it's difficult to kind of, I think, in my head, anatomize RS is kind of unique in that sense in that there are plenty of people who kind of um, learn to play the piano and then kind of drop it for kind of a few years and then kind of come back to it kind of or even 30 years later when they're retired and for our habits it's kind of easy to fall in and out of the kind of things it's kind of I mean like when people people tend to say that when they have children that kind of every hobby they used to have um, kind of falls by the wayside because they're just their life is just dominated by the child and um, so there are kind of patterns and tendencies to kind of pick up and drop off habits. But I don't think RS is kind of uh, particularly unique in that framework. It's just something that happens to be kind of like um, gambling or drugs or whatever, something that people tend to come back to at some point, something it's very difficult to kick, but it's probably quite a healthy thing to be coming back to. What would you say uh, RuneScape's a healthy thing to come back to? It's not really kind of necessarily harming anyone. It's not harming yourself. It's not harming anyone. Kind of community as a whole tends to be kind of a little bit edge lordy, but pretty kind of reasoned and friendly. And kind of it's good. I mean, anything that I, I think one of the good things in society in general, kind of particularly in modern society, is that you kind of come into contact with lots of different opinions and voices. That there's a greater kind of um, ability to communicate with people with different perspectives and different life experiences now arguably than it's ever been before. And so kind of online forums like RS you encounter those people but kind of again like I, I suspect the majority of the clan is kind of male people in their mid-20s to early 30s uh, again primarily kind of probably majority based in the states and kind of that that's a demographic i don't necessarily interact with massively or, or wouldn't interact with massively otherwise and so coming into contact with kind of other people beyond that is i think fundamentally a healthy thing that mm, hearing okay. other voices and opinions as long as you reflect on them kind of critically and think about them tends to be a good thing um, which kind of i think well, rs can be a short sure, distraction can absorb huge amounts of life and time and so on but it's not necessarily actively harming you, and I think it's possible to extract good things from it as well. Would you say that you extract good things from it? Like you specifically, not like other people? It's difficult to tell, I mean... <laughs> I, I, I don't know if there's anything, or there's a huge amount I've necessarily kind of learned because, or kind of learned for real life or taken from RS. That's fair. I don't necessarily think I've, I've become a better person because of RS, but sure, I've, I think encounter people kind of I like and value and have made friends with, people who've kind of got opinions that are different to the ones I hold and so on, which in that terms is, is probably a good thing that I kind of, it keeps me kind of real that I don't just become kind of part of in my case the kind of the liberal elite bubble but I'm aware of there being other voices out there that have kind of interesting and important things to say even if I then end up disagreeing with the majority of them yeah I would say it sounds like it 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 sounds like interacting with people that you typically wouldn't interact with to make perhaps makes you a 
a better... It, maybe it makes you like a more relatable person. You know, maybe uh, you're more accepting of others in some ways. Um, so although you don't play RuneScape specifically for that purpose, um, there are values you can glean from interacting with that medium. Um, and it's not, or it can be not as harmful, right? As something like excessive drinking or like doing a bunch of drugs or gambling or anything like that. Uh, it could be relatively chill and perhaps you can extract some good things out of if you think about it, I guess. Yeah, exactly. There are, there are fewer downsides and there are potentials mm -hmm. to gain, or there is potential for gain. And as long as it doesn't just become kind of, again, like a, a, a YouTube algorithm echo chamber of kind of gradually making whatever opinions you hold increasingly extreme, then again, it's probably good in net terms. And to a certain extent, these kind of meaningless internet forums are a good way for people to kind of take out their, their rage and their, their weird opinions in a kind of fairly harmless setting that kind of doesn't come into contact with kind of other members of society. Yeah. Yes, there is... Perhaps there is some meaning to those interactions, for sure. That's funny. Um, yeah. Well, cool. Well, Jasper, I, uh, I don't have any further topics I want to cover with you at the moment. Usually towards the end, I'll open it up to the guests if they want to ask uh, any questions. Um, or not the guests, I mean the listeners. So in our case, we have Smog. And I think Bogskin was on. He may be taking care of his baby right now. But we're going to go ahead and unmute everybody. Smog, if you want to ask a question, you can. I was going to say to, to kind of Smog won't be shy to, to kind of to make him ask questions if he hasn't prepared anything. Oh, usually it's just kind of like uh, just whatever they want to ask. So I'm a, uh, I'm kind of still working right now. Like I'm, I literally just got in the car and I like, I got still got to go talk to my client. Um, the only thing I want to know, Jasper, is where are you from? Where do you hail from? Yeah, so uh, I'm from the UK. I, I live in London. Dude, that's awesome. Um, I just always wondered because you were always on at like super weird hours, like for us. So I was like, I just kind of was on super late. Yeah, that that that's why <laughs> kind of me and work have been trying to kind of uh, have been working for ages to kind of try and line this up, just because kind of the, there's a like six hour time difference. You know, I'm part of the kind of the British minority in the in the work with fan chat, so the for a few of us, but that that's why I'm on at weird hours. That's awesome. Well. That's that's the only question I have right I'm now. I'm glad like, that that's all it takes to meet your approval or to gain your approval. No, I, I if I wasn't working right now, I would ask like twenty more questions. But like I'm on my phone, so I was just lurking a little bit and listening. All good. Yes, Jasper is a uh, he's British, but he's a good guy. I was gonna say like that, that that's a particular kind of British accent. I I think I tend to kind of pronounce my T's and kind of enunciate most syllables kind of properly. Um, I mean like get an American to say aluminium and kind of how would you say aluminium workless? Aluminum. Exactly. Um, you, you've dropped the I in aluminium and the the way it's spelled properly. What? So kind of it, it cuts <laughs> both, it cuts both ways. Wait, is it is hold hold on aluminium? Is that something else that's not aluminium? Yeah. Aluminium. So aluminium is the same as aluminum. It's just kind of how Americans pronounce aluminium, kind of from my perspective, incorrectly. Oh, I see. And so, kind of, we, we can both drop. We can both kind of shoot right. shots about kind of well, dropping syllables or letters or incorrect, yeah. incorrect pronunciation. Well, I I'm familiar with the uh, with the European way of spelling things. I mean, there's a lot of extra vowels that y'all add that Americans don't. Um, I went. I, I did the IB program, uh, like growing up. So a lot of the, a lot of my textbooks, it being like international baccalaureate, uh, used a lot of the I guess the European spelling of words. Um, so a word like uh, estrogen, for example, in the states is just e, e s t r o g e n. Yeah. But where you're from, yeah. I, there's an O in there for some fucking reason, right? There's oestrogen stuff like that. 
Um, I did not know that aluminum was aluminium where you were from. That's yeah, it, it's yeah. weird. It's also it's interesting to hear that you did the IB. It's kind of, as I understand, it's quite unusual to do the IB in, in the States. The it, kind is. Of, it is. It is. AP, the AP system is so kind of dominant. And I think a lot of the top high schools are even moving away from the AP system now. Yeah, no, I, uh, I grew up with IB, so I am familiar with some weird spellings. I just never saw aluminium before. Um, but... Yeah, so, as far as I'm aware, it's, it's spelled the same. It's just pronounced pronounced differently. So kind of, as I say, kind of we, we pronounce that final I. So like, how do you spell it then? A-L-U-M-I-N-I-U-M. Okay, so here in the States, it's just A-L-U-M-I-N-U-M. There's no I. So literally, it's the vowels. Okay. You, yeah, so the spelling you, is... You do drop the I. Right. And the okay. same thing with estrogen. I mean, the same thing with, like, color. Like you, you guys spell it C L C O L O U R, correct? So yeah, yeah. Here we spell it C O L O R. <laughs> yeah, it's just color. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the joke in the in the UK is that kind of Americans drop letters to make things simpler and easier to understand, which is kind of a noble goal, but also kind of feeds into the idea of kind of Americans being simplistic in that sense. That's funny. Yeah, I. Um, there are certain words that I. I still spell um, correctly, but it's more like this incorrect, like in something like Microsoft Word or something like that. Or, um, and the word color, estrogen, are one of those things. I typically do add the O um, or the U in those things. Um, that's just because like I say, how I grew up with. But that, that but that's say, from, like, how, the how often of, like, are you American. typing out? How what? How often are you typing out color and estrogen? Uh, I don't know. Like whenever I. I don't know. Whenever I whenever I talk about color, I usually add a U, and then I kind of like erase it and write just like an O, you know, because it's just. Uh... If I were to do it on a Word document, it would Microsoft Word would mark that as red, as in I misspelled it, basically. Um, but the the habit is still there. I think there's there, there are certain words that I I think of spelling. It's not incorrect, but it's incorrect for Americans. Um, also, when I eat, uh, I <laughs> like I understand. I guess like in Europe, you guys eat like kind of transcontinental style for um, uh, like for for your for for, for like fine dining. Um, you know what I mean? In, in what sense? So like, it seems to kind if of you be were, a kind of you were topic to, pivot. If you were to, yeah, this is obviously not related to RuneScape, but it's on the topic of uh, European culture, perhaps. Uh, everything from yeah. spelling words incorrectly to uh, <laughs> uh, the way that y'all eat food at dinner. Uh, but I guess transcontinental style for, for fine dining is you don't, you don't, so if, if we were cutting into a steak right now, right? Americans, what yeah. they would do is they would cut that steak, right? Uh, if you're right-handed, I guess, you, you would have the knife in your right hand, fork in your left, cut the steak, and then you would transfer the steak with the fork from your left hand to your right, and then that's how you would eat it. Versus, yeah, what, why the fuck would you do, why well, the fuck would you do that? Yeah, yeah, well, I, I agree with you, which is why I don't do that. You know, it's very, uh, it's inefficient. But in, uh, in Europe, like the common thing is really you guys just cut it and you don't even like you just eat it like that right there's no need to like kind of switch things over um also understand like if you are done with eating you cross right the uh, the silverware on the plate uh, make a cross versus in america you would just kind of put it diagonally um just like stuff like that i don't know so uh, yeah the, the cross so, so, so the first thing that is a thing that's true in Europe, kind of you just kind of keep the cutlery in the same hand throughout the meal. And um, the cross thing, that may be a thing in certain European countries, but in the UK it's not. That it's you not, just okay. like once you finish, once you finish, you put the cutlery together, um, just kind of next to each other, wherever on the plate. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm glad I'm kind of educating you about kind of European culture, but kind of every day is a learning opportunity. Well, it's a uh, it, it it's just something that I 
I noticed because I'm doing it not the way that other that that people typically do it in my country. If that makes sense, it's different. Like, you you know, you're you're from Europe, right? So it's just it's normal, right? There are certain things that I do that yeah. aren't like it. I I just have to kind of check myself. I'm like, okay, cool. That's not how you do it, type of thing. Um, so. You don't need to check yourself. You should feel good about yourself doing it better, doing it the proper way. Doing it the proper way. I, uh, at least with dinner, I would say I, I conform to keeping my, you know, like whatever way I'm eating my food. I don't switch the hands. Um, I think personally it's, it's a little bit more efficient and it looks better. Uh, but when it comes to spelling, I do drop the unnecessary vowels. Uh, because I think that's more curt as well. So that's uh, that, that's where I stand. I, I take the best from both from both cultures. Okay, right, yeah, I respect that. And kind of next podcast episode, we can get on to kind of weights and measures and metric versus imperial and all oh, of that no, kind I... of European versus you. <laughs> all of that European versus US bullshit. But hang on, you're you're a, you're a pharmacist or kind of important pharmacy, so you must be on kind of metric and kind of be judgy of imperial as well. I don't yeah i mean the only time you would use like pounds and stuff is like you would like measure somebody in like pounds right uh you would tell them how much you would they weigh in pounds but as far as entering into any system it's not like this person weighs 200 pounds right uh you would measure them in yeah. kilograms so um as far as like input goes everything goes uh the metric system but as far as like colloquial communicating with everyday americans you would use um not that right uh so i don't know i guess it just makes things a little more complicated in some ways and confusing but it is it is what it is yeah i mean the uk literally uses kind of metric and imperial simultaneously it uses kind of miles but also kind of pounds but also kind of kilograms and oh interesting and so okay on. i didn't realize y'all used so miles. Kind of, I think, yeah i thought everything, yeah, was, so kind of, I thought every, everything was kilometers for y'all yeah so everything on the continent so everything on the kind of mainland europe is in kilometers is completely metric but kind of the uk still uses bits of the imperial system and then kind of majority now metric system but like distances are measured in miles and so on people will be kind of weighed in stone or kind of express their weight in stone more often than kilos but then kind of all measurements are done in uh, all measurements otherwise are done in kind of centimeters rather than inches and so on so it's kind of a weird um kind of mix of the two but what it does mean is that kind of most people in the uk will be fairly familiar with both okay interesting i've never been to the uk before but that's good to know perhaps one day you, you, you if should I come at some point UK, if yeah, would you, uh, yeah, you, would you be down to show me around if I visit? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I had a friend from um, North Carolina come over literally the last kind of couple of weeks and kind of showed him around London. They're more than happy to show kind of clueless Americans around London and so on, yeah. Have you, have you visited Europe at all? Is London... Have I been to Europe at all? I've never been to Europe. I've actually never left the Western Hemisphere, so... Okay, that, that, that's a weird way of expressing it. Yeah, I was just... Well, like, I mean, like, like, that's... I don't know, like, uh... Earth-wise, you know, it's just... North and South America are on the west, Western Hemisphere, right? And y'all are on the Eastern Hemisphere. That's just how I think about it. I've never crossed uh, over to your side before. But I've been all over North America, so... But, you know... I would like to visit Europe one day, though. I think uh, going there. Yeah, you, getting. Uh, yeah, you should do. You, you can't be. You can't be one of those Americans who doesn't have a passport. Kind of energy. You've got to be kind of a cultured American. Yeah, perhaps. I, I don't know. It's uh, London has never been a place I like. If you were to list off like top five places I wanted to visit, London isn't on there, but. Since I'm talking to you right now, I would I would visit I would visit London if you were to show me around, you know. So I'm yeah, happy happy to, and I, I'm kind of it's fine that it's not. I mean, out of curiosity, what would be in your top five? I would visit in a top place. I would want to visit. I don't know. I would 
Honestly, I, I'd like to visit some Asian countries. I think like Tokyo, like uh, would be really cool. Uh, not even not Tokyo, like just any part of Japan. Um, I think that stuff's really cool. Um, Russia. Uh, Taiwan. Australia. Taiwan was a slightly interesting choice. What was yeah. the kind of the impetus there? I like Taiwan as they are the Confederacy of China. You know, whereas in America, the Confederacy was uh, like destroyed and everything is now the Union. In, uh, in Asia, it's as if like the Confederacy of China were allowed to live, right? And they made Taiwan. And I think that's a very fascinating situation they have over there that doesn't exist in america right um, i mean that, that that's true in a sense but kind of taiwan is also kind of a modern liberal democracy compared to kind of the more reactionary kind of old-fashioned or semi-authoritarian state of kind of mainland china mm -hmm. so in that sense it's kind of the the kind of the reverse of the confederacy that it's kind of as i said it's modern right. liberal democracy well, what, but it's not kind of inhabiting confederate ideals when i describe confederate i mean like they are they like if china is the union right taiwan is the confederacy right because they, yeah in, in terms of power in terms of who won the civil war yeah, yeah exactly yeah Th those are where all like the uh, the people who lost the uh, the chinese civil war went right <laughs> So, but yeah, I, I think Taiwan would be very cool to visit. Um, but specifically Europe? Fuck, I don't know. Uh, obviously, I, I would want to visit Rome. Um, I think, like, visiting the Seven Hills would be really cool. Uh, just seeing that. Uh, I don't know. I guess, I guess Britain? I don't know. <laughs> you, you sound a bit hesitant there. It's not that I wouldn't want to visit uh, London. It's just there are a lot of other places I would rather visit before I visit London. But I would like to visit you if I were in that area. In which case, London would go up on the places I would want to visit because there's somebody that... Not somebody I know, but somebody that I've spoken with on Discord before. <laughs> so it is a, it's like a loose connection, you know? <laughs> Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, kind of, you've got a long life ahead of you, and there's kind of loads of countries to visit, and we'll have the opportunity to visit infinitely more than five. I'm sure, just kind of go for it. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it and I, I'm very aware that it's easy for me to kind of be culturally snobbish about kind of talking to Americans who will tend to kind of travel within America, and yet kind of make the mainland US is kind of geographically the size of most of continental Europe. And so kind of me kind of getting on a 30 quid flight or kind of 30 pound flight to Rome or whatever, which is easy for me to do, is the equivalent of you traveling to Montana or wherever an equivalent distance it is for you. So kind of it's important to have those equivalences that it's kind of it's much more right, difficult for you to right. travel to kind of completely new countries. Yeah, no, that's that that's a that's an interesting way to look at it. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, you know, but but another thing, though, is. You know, come, growing up from the UK, there is, um, and this is like a perspective that's not my own, but it is something that I read from a guy a lot smarter than me named uh, Alexis de Tocqueville, which I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he... I, I know a little bit of de Tocqueville, and kind of, don't, don't hide kind of behind people who you're claiming clever than you, don't kind of, don't, don't kind of couch any edgy opinions in that, kind of just own them. Well, I'm just saying, like it's, uh, it's this is like a perspective that I that I got from his democracy in America, right? Is the, uh, it's the idea that at least at the time, America didn't have like its own kind of culture, and Tocqueville and his description of American culture was, in some ways, very, uh, um, like the the books in America are not good because this ultimately come from a culture that is not its own, it's not original, right? Unlike you know, Tocqueville is French, uh, unlike France, unlike Britain, stuff like that. Um, I think there is some truths to that. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's like, I don't know, let's, uh, like the, like the U.S. isn't as old as the European countries, but it's, it's definitely got, got its own culture, right? Um, and even like different parts of the United States are completely different. Um, like where I'm from versus somewhere further up Northeast or, 
uh, for the West. It's just it's it it could basically be its its own country. Um, it's just a matter of we're all considered uh, part of the state of the United States of America, right? So. But with all that being said, I would like to visit you at some point in London. Uh, I've heard London is very dirty, but if you were there, I'd visit it. I think you might have muted yourself, Jasper. I can't hear you. Am I back now? I hear you now, yes. That, that seems to be working. Um, London's not particularly dirty as kind of as far as big cities go, in my experience. It's not kind of Singapore, but nowhere as clean as Singapore. Um, well, like, Singapore, they'll like chop off your dirty. hand if you, if you litter, so it's a little bit different over there. Yeah, I, I quite like Singapore. I just didn't like that they banned jaywalking. And so, you can't, <laughs> I mean, obviously that's a, a big thing in America, but I'm just like, if, if uh, there are no cars in the street, why should you not be able to cross it? This is kind of, this is a, an outrageous imposition by the state. Um, <laughs> it's kind of weird that that exists in, in both America and Singapore. Um, but yeah, but anyway, no, no, Singapore is kind of pristinely clean and kind of great in many ways, but kind of quite boring in others. I've never been there. Um... So I, I, I really don't have much I can say about that, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It, I, I think it'd be cool to visit, so. Uh, yeah, I, I promise you London isn't really any dirtier than kind of most big cities I've been to do. Is it? And okay. Things like the underground versus the subway are considerably, like the underground in London is considerably kind of cleaner and less dirty than the subway in New York. They don't have oh. enormous rat infestations like they do in New York, for I example. I don't, I don't doubt that. You know, like New York is uh, New York is a cool place to visit. I would never want to live in New York City or anything like that. Okay, do, do you feel you're kind of more authentic, Amer more authentic American, kind of rejecting that kind of big city, metropolitan, cosmopolitan? No, I don't life? think so. Do you think that's kind of I, corrupting I, the kind of the purity? You know, I. It, I think it's interesting hearing uh, that question coming from somebody that's not native to the U.S. I I don't think so. Um, I, I just think my perspective is just a product of where I'm from within the U.S. Um, most people where I'm from do not desire to want to live in a metropolitan, so, uh, and especially a metropolitan like New York City. Right, um, but you know it's, it, uh, but like I said, a lot of that is just like different parts of the U.S. They literally have like their own culture, and they they could be a different country. It's just we're all under the umbrella of the United States of America, right? But as yeah, far as the I people, mean, but... um, the politics, it's completely different. I don't know if you've ever been to the U.S. before, but. You know, going to like visiting like your friend in North Carolina. I don't know where he's in in North Carolina, but North Carolina would be considered Southern. That culture is a lot different than a place like New York City. Yeah, um, I've kind of uh, I've been to the US a couple of times, and I'm kind of obviously not as nuanced and stunning as you will be, kind of as a proper American. But I'm aware of kind of the the loose kind of coastal kind of versus kind of inland divide, the kind of coastal elites, kind of north versus south, and all these kind of ways of chopping up the US and kind of going back to the to Tocqueville discussion that Tocqueville was obviously kind of commenting on America as a really new country that mm -hmm. maybe kind of 40, 50 years after it was founded. Right. Yeah, well, this of, was in the 1830s. Is had an additional, yeah. yeah, exactly. America's had an extra 180, 190 years right. of kind of, I was going to say development, but kind of, let's sort of say development, let's say evolution um, yeah. since then and has kind of built up its own history in different ways and obviously there are bits of America that are massively older with being kind of settlers or kind of Western settlers in Boston since the 17th century yeah. and kind of Native Americans for kind of hundreds and thousands of years before that. So kind of there is history there. It's just kind of it develops and accretes over kind of years and years. And I think it's I, I kind of fundamentally disagree with the kind of the easy European 
opinion that kind of America oh. is a country without history because it does have kind of its own history and um, it's yeah it, it, it's it's certainly reached a point now where it's kind of an interesting kind of case study i like it jasper going mask off right now being the uh american sympathizer over here saying america does it's have about, its own culture <laughs> it's not about being american sympathizer it's about kind of just like assessing just the world kidding. in your own way it's yeah. I mean, I, I'm very happy to be sympathetic about some things I think of or associate with America and kind of less sympathetic about others. So there are good and bad things in every system in society. Yes. All right. Is that a good point to kind of finish up on? The kind of the good, good and bad things in every society? <laughs> or kind of, do, do you have a catchphrase to kind of finish off a podcast well, with? Well, actually, what I finish off the podcast with is the last thing i have for you jasper before we wrap up is what words of wisdom and or advice could you leave with our audience today and that'll be a wrap it is the kind of in terms of previous podcasts have people gone mostly for kind of rs advice or general life advice uh we uh typically life advice i like to end with that Okay, um, then kind of off the cuff, I would just say think critically, that kind of don't take anything as read, kind of always question your opinions, and always kind of investigate issues properly and deeply. I like it. Well, thank you, Jasper. It, thank I was you. Say, is, that, is, that, is that good? Is that a wholesome one? I don't know what kind of advice people have typically gone for. Oh, it's, it's excellent. Been kind of trivial or whether it's been very deep and meaningful, <laughs> typically. No, it's, it, no, that's good. That's good. Um, the the ending advice generally varies with the person, right? Um, I think that what you said about thinking critically fits you very well. Um, being a person who every single question I've asked, not every single question, but it ends with it. It's kind of hard to like. It depends, you know. It's just I, I think I think it fits your. Uh, your personality <laughs> very well um, yeah it, it, it frustrates me that i can't kind of just go straight in with the kind of this is good this is bad um but kind of I, occasionally i'll do that to to kind of shit post but i don't necessarily genuinely believe it and say i think most shit posters don't necessarily kind of massively believe in the opinions they express anyway so it's all a little bit ambiguous if most people are honest anyway right right well that, that that's just part of being on the internet though right you're not gonna take whatever anybody says uh or you shouldn't take whatever anybody says for the most part seriously ever um but obviously a lot of that is changing now so but that, that, that's a really neat loop back to kind of where the discussion began that kind of hour and a half ago so that was great hosting oh thank you thank you jasper i hope you had a good time coming on thank you for staying up till probably what one one fifty your time right now i know you have work tomorrow so it means a lot thanks for coming on jasper and thank yeah, you no, no problem thank you smog and uh and that's it guys bye guys there are baby fucking blood drinkers ruining your internet. Dude, that's so funny. I just uh I just started the recording right when you said that, but okay. <laughs>